You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. Star Wars Unlock the Escape Game, a puzzle and adventure game for team play including a trio of exciting Star Wars stories, Rebels, Escape from the Ice Planet Hoth, Smugglers, Break Out of an Imperial Star Destroyer, and Imperial Agents, Recover Kyber Crystals from the Ancient Moon Jedi. Welcome to Tabletop Arcanum, we're your hosts, Justin and Ricky, and today, you heard right, we are talking about Star Wars Unlock the Escape Game. This is put out by Space Cowboy, and plays time is 60 minutes per adventure, and you get three of them in the box, so you could really get three hours of gameplay out of this. One to six players, and ages 10 up. I do need to call out that this does require an app, because the app is your timer, and hints, and codes, and everything else that kind of like mechanically drives the game outside of the decks of cards in the box. Mm-hmm. So, if you are not a fan of hybrid games, you can go ahead and stop here. But, if that hasn't stopped you yet, let's talk about Star Wars Unlock the Escape Game. Both of us are big Star Wars fans, so, like, when they announced Star Wars Unlock themed, I'm like, I'm buying it because uh, I'm dumb and will buy things that have Star Wars label on it, even if it's a reskin of an escape game. But, at the same time, it's nice because it it was like a at-home escape room Star Wars themed. Yeah. I've done a ton of escape rooms before COVID happened, and I had done one space station themed one, but I've never done anything that's, you know, obviously licensed like Star Wars, so, Mm. man, that would be fun. Yeah, I know they had, what, the Harry Potter one, they had a Arkham Horror? There's actually been two, whether they survive everything of 2020 or not, but there was actually officially licensed Arkham Universe ones. There's one in Canada, one in opening up in Washington. And I know when you see licensed stuff like that, a lot of times you're already drawn to it. You and I even talked at one point, we're like, Arkham Horror, let's see if we can accidentally end up there. I had an entire trip planned this year around that escape room. Yeah. Trip got canceled. But the plans are still in motion, so eventually, maybe one day, we will go and do that. But yeah, it's it's one of those fun things, and I've tried the Unlock series way back when they started, and that's when they were releasing three boxes at a time, and you could buy each box individually, if one theme called out to you or not. Lately, they've been packaging the three Avengers in one bigger box, so this one is thirty four ninety nine MSRP, so it's a little bit pricier, but keep in mind, you are getting three adventures in one box. Since it's all Star Wars, if you're already in there for Star Wars, the other two for Star Wars will you know, most likely be a thing. Let's talk about first impressions. It's a Star Wars game, so you're already happy. It's, it's a Star Wars game. The art is fantastic. The box is beautiful. It draws me in right away. Honestly, looking at the box, what it does remind me of is just like those old 90s PC games. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the middle section where it's a smuggler adventure in space does have that X-Wing versus TIE Fighter feel Mm -hmm. to the art. So, yeah, it definitely eye-catches, and whether you like Tauntaun, Stormtroopers, or TIE Fighters, they've got you covered. This was the first time I've played the Unlock in a single box, so I actually am a little disappointed that it's a bigger box and it's less portable. It was one of the things I actually liked about the Unlock games, because they were like a small little box with a Mm -hmm. deck of cards in there, and and you were ready to go. But that's okay, because you can still, like, take the deck with you if you just want to take Mm -hmm. one adventure with you let's talk about what the good things are in this it's star wars so (laughs) one done multiple difficulties Mm -hmm. unlock does like a three lock system so one two or three it's two ones and then a two so the first two adventures are relatively on the straightforward simple side and then the third one mixes it up and dials up the difficulty a little bit and then playing all three definitely that is there they do also include a little themed 10 card tutorial to show you kind of how an unlock game plays without actually going through a major thing spoiling all the big stuff for you to have to reset and redo it some of the puzzles were really clever the way they app interplay with some of the puzzles was really clever because there was a couple of them that you actually pick up your phone or it listens through your microphone or you have to do something on the screen specifically to make that puzzle work and it felt more integrated than the other unlock series have been what have you liked about it I like that it actually captured the feeling of an episode of Star Wars. Mm. It it actually felt like its own standalone story, put you right into the action, and it was fun. Yeah. 
captures the theme really well. Mm-hmm. And each story felt very unique to each other, too. So, like, if you play them back to back to back, you're getting three different stories. Now, I want to comment, without spoiling anything, they are not connected stories either. So you could play any of them in any order, and that doesn't matter. It's just, do you want to play a Hoth story, a Smuggler story, or an Imperial story? Mm -hmm. The box is laid out in such a way where all the decks kind of integrate and keep nice. There was also one thing that I enjoyed that the old unlocks did not have, and that is the solution guide. Mm. So I do a lot of escape rooms, and so there are a lot of those basic puzzles, like the easy modes on this one. I do find a little bit easier, but that's mostly because of the amount I've done escape rooms, and I've seen a lot of puzzles, and I understand where a lot of that puzzle logic comes from so the easier difficulties i see a lot of those faster but what they did do if if this is your first foray into puzzle games or maybe there was one puzzle that was just a little too tricky for you and your group the solution guide is a step-by-step solutions of how you would walk through the game including like some of the logic parts like hey this is why you'd be looking here so you can actually kind of look at it and go, okay, this makes sense. This is how you were supposed to decipher that puzzle. Not just like, here's the solution. The mm. answer is one, two, three, four. It's, this is how you would find out the answer is one, two, three, four. And I thought that was a nice inclusion into the game. Because I've come across some puzzles in escape rooms of like, how were we as players supposed to figure that part out? Without trial and error of like, okay, does one, two, three, four work? Okay, one, two, three, four, four. That that sort of like, just try it until it works meth method. So I'm glad they actually kind of put that logic book together so you can actually see where the puzzles come from. I do appreciate that they don't let you force your way through it. One of the main things that you have to do is put in a pin or a code. Do it several times throughout all the different missions. And they won't allow you to just repeatedly do that. They will penalize you in certain areas. So you don't just keep throwing in numbers until you finally get through it. They want you to actually solve the puzzle. Yeah, and all of those things are good and make sense. So I'm I'm very happy with a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about where some of the opportunities on this one are then. Obviously, the first opportunity, and it kind of is a little bit on the obvious side, it is a story puzzle game so once you've played through the decks you're kind of done with it however you can pass it along to other people like i will probably pass this along to my next star wars buddy at some point of like hey i've played all three of them i enjoyed them but here have a go at it and i've done that with a couple other escape room style games too of like hey i had my fun but I need time before I play this again, so why don't you take it and just, you know, when you're done, pass it to another player, Mm. another person. Now, this one does recommend one to six players. I have played the Unlock games at two players. I've played the games at max players. I do not recommend max players. I barely recommend two players. I liked the two player. We did bounce off each other very nicely throughout it, Mm -hmm. but on some points... It does become pretty linear, and you only have a set amount of cards in front of you. That's true. Yeah, and that that's where escape rooms, you can physically separate players and give mm. different puzzles to different players. There's a pro to that, because then you can support, let's say, four people working on four things at the same time. This doesn't really allow for that, and... Unfortunately, that's just kind of the exploring a deck model Mm -hmm. that they build. The nice thing is it's replayable because you can just take that deck and pass it along. The downside is you're really just kind of going through a linear story, which is neat, and you're solving puzzles to get to the next piece of the story, but everybody's kind of working on the same puzzles at the same time, and you don't really get multiple puzzles given to you at the same time, like you said. Mm -hmm. So that's both a pro and a con, depending on how you are on puzzles. Yeah, I'm going to take a small soapbox here of, I understand that it requires an app, There is already an Unlock app, but the Star Wars edition requires a separate Star Wars Unlock app. Now, not knowing the architecture of the original app versus this one, I have a feeling that because of some of the interactions that you get to do with your phone in this particular Star Wars Unlock, I think they had to build a separate app to support some of that. Another theory is maybe the IP and that being licensed through Star Wars. It required them to build as a separate app or maybe to incorporate the Star Wars themes and music. I definitely recommend playing with your speaker on because you can kind of get mood music throughout the entire time. I just wish it wasn't two apps because that just seems ridiculous. I'm sure there's a very reasonable reason, but from a consumer standpoint, I'm just frustrated by it because I already had the app. Why am I downloading another app? Especially if it's almost one and done type game where you're going to use the app 
while you play through the three separate scenarios. And then after that, you might not need it again for a year or two until you come back and, and try playing it again, just for old time's sake. Some of my cons are just kind of general unlocked cons, not really specific to the Star Wars ones, but like because it is a deck, you kind of go through it once. Because it is a deck, you're going through cards and sometimes you're not using the cards right. One thing the unlock games do that I'm not a huge fan of is hidden numbers in their art of like, oh, look really closely and you'll see the number 13. Now you can go grab card 13, but it wasn't really called out. So depending on the group, that's either really interesting or really lame. Mm. And I find it a little bit more on the lame side. I would prefer that energy to be put into more clever visual puzzles than more spot the hidden object. Yeah, and there are even some points when it was literally just a number slightly lighter than the background. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even like they integrated it into something it was just there the ones that were integrated into something like there was you know an object or something that was like shaped in a number or had a solution that's visibly shown in the art yeah and you have to kind of put that Mm -hmm. that i enjoy but like you said if it's a faded number on like a background and just kind of a hidden number less exciting the other downside i have with this one particularly is with most unlock games, your mileage will vary depending on how you are on puzzle games. Like, I feel I was challenged with a two-difficulty game, but I never really felt challenged on one-difficulty sessions. I want to go back to what you said about the the box. You know how much I love as much jam-packed everything? This has so much empty space in the box below around everything yeah it almost feels like a waste i do love the box itself so i would display this box but if this was any other ip if this was just a regular unlock game i'd be really disappointed in the size of this box that's fair who would you recommend this game for Uh, if you love star wars you want to try this out plain and simple it's a quick fun way for you and a few of your friends to get a little more enjoyment out of the star wars universe it's not directly tied to anything they do reference locations and certain things from the movies or tv show yeah and actually that kind of goes on to a good point too you don't need to have a lot of star wars knowledge to enjoy this because there isn't any sort of hidden information that like oh i I recognize that character and i know he's a rebel so therefore i can make that no you don't need that knowledge so you can enjoy this game without that star wars knowledge if you just like watching the movies or like the universe but not really a big fanboy over it like you are ricky it's okay but if you are there are things in the game that are little easter eggs or little call outs of like oh yeah i know what those droids are like i remember Mm -hmm. that guy from the background in rogue one stuff like that where it's like oh that's cool yeah but doesn't actually have any gameplay or impact other than hey that's an easter egg that they hid in there for us i would recommend this game for people who like star wars or if you want that little little bit of an escape room experience in your house that is star wars themed i would also recommend this for smaller groups like i would say two to four players i would not recommend this necessarily for the full six because of the linear nature of how many cards are dealt Mm -hmm. at the same time when i've played this with higher player counts people tend to sit around i get this in escape rooms too if there's too many cooks in the kitchen and are not enough puzzles for all the cooks in the kitchen people tend to sit around a little bit and there's downtime and that's not fun so definitely keep your player count smaller with this one two three players four if you got like a family and there's like a mix of ages there is a lot of reading so i would definitely careful about going too young on this game but if you've got some possible preteens and teenagers they could dig into this game uh who would you not recommend it for you just don't like star wars my girlfriend wants nothing to do with star wars i would not bring this home and i would not try to make her play this if you don't like escape rooms either if you're just not a fan it has the 60 minute time limit it's a hard stop at that 60 minute if you feel like you're gonna waste your time by not being able to get done that 60 minutes and then beat yourself up over it i I wouldn't play it yeah because there's a difficulty one difficulty one difficulty two game in this if you are someone who enjoys puzzle games and someone who's decent at them or good at escape rooms come at this as a little bit probably under your expectations but i think a lot of that comes from them trying to hit the star wars market and trying to make it more accessible than trying to make it too difficult 
Mm-hmm. And so I would caution people. On that note, I would also caution game groups that have a controlling player. Mm-hmm. The power gamer sort of person who has to do everything because that will suck the fun away from everybody else. You have to have a collaborative team. What you and I did when we played through is like you read some cards, I was going through the deck dealing you cards mm-hmm. for you to read and then like kind of just like shared responsibilities. We had the phone and the app between us so either one of us could kind of poke at it when we needed mm-hmm. to. I would also caution this if you are a true diehard analog gamer, I know they're out there, who want no electronics or nothing to do with electronics with mm-hmm. their board gaming, the Unlock series is not one for you because they incorporate that app. I'm sorry. I would recommend the Exit series instead over Unlock, but if that does not turn you off, I think the app integration makes it interesting enough and allows them to provide you clues and context without spoiling anything. Because you can literally go, I'm stuck on card 13, give me a hint on card 13 only. Mm-hmm. So that is our review of Star Wars Unlock the Escape Game. This has been Justin and Ricky. You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum. Thanks for listening. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're on Twitch and followed up with YouTube. And if you want live updates, make sure you open your Tauntaun and read its entrails. Happy gaming. You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum, hosted by Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, and featuring the original music by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. As always, thanks for listening.